Why do you look so scared, Joe? That's got to come out, hasn't it? Many are still teenagers and have never lived away from home. Day one, this is where they start. As soon as they come off the train, as soon as their name's been ticked off on that sheet, they're ours. They're with us. Yeah, we've got them. Stop mincing, Joe! Get sprinting! They're about to begin the Parachute Regiment's elite 28-week recruitment course. It's the most brutal test of body and mind in the British Army. Yes, this is no. Attack it! The men that train them have been to war. They know what it takes to become a para. You're all right. Come on, come on. Stay with it. Stay with it, Joe. You're right. Don't patrol that nice straight pavement, OK? It's always on this shit. My body, I just don't feel it. It's ready yet. Boys will need to become soldiers capable of taking a life. Our bread and butter is soldiering in the field, closing with the enemy and killing him. To finally earn the regiment's maroon beret will be a test of character and courage. Only a handful will succeed. We've got here 20. 20, yeah. Uh... Right, Joe, grab all your kit, make sure you don't leave anything behind, follow one behind me. Yeah, we're gonna get on the coach and get ourselves to carry it. Hurry up, John! Hurry up! Oh. The platoon of recruits are now a third of the way through their training course. Of the original 40, only 27 now remain. As part of removing their civilian identity, they've all been given the name Joe. Right, Joe, you're about to take part in one of the most aggressive parts of training, OK? Bayonet training. When I say what makes the grass grow, you're going to say blood, blood, blood! Do you understand? It has to grow! What makes the grass grow? Blow, blow, blow! What's the planet for? Kill, kill, kill! What makes the grass grow? Blow, blow, blow! A lot of people consider the powers to be a bit of a cult. I suppose the reason for that is we have absolute belief in ourselves and each other. Right, Joe, partner off now, turn and face the bloke next to you. Stare him out! Some of you are pathetic! Got nothing about ya! Look at him in the eyes! If, on operations, we were being fired upon by the enemy and no one can see where the enemy is, we would manoeuvre ourselves to try and get eyes on the enemy. The final possible solution is to ask the power to stand up and run to try and draw out the fire of the enemy. That is why we need to train them the way we do here, so that they will do that for the good of the other people in the platoon. One, touch the back, go! Get away! Get away! Get away! A common reason for failing the course is injury. One of the oldest recruits, Private Parry, has injured his leg. He first joined the army when he was 17, but left after just four years. Now he's returned, wanting to become a para, but that depends on how quickly he can recover. I'm 31 now. Most of the guys that I'm training with, they're like 17 to 21. And then you've got me, uh, basically known as the granddad of the, of the platoon. The disadvantage at my age is the whole wear and tear thing. Um, unfortunately, I've come down with an infection called uh, cellulitis. So it's quite painful. Um, being given painkillers, antibiotics, uh, the bottom part of my shin was all inflamed and really red. Bit of uh, 
a blow, I wouldn't lie, because I'm in here, the rest of the platoon's doing the training. So, yeah, it's kind of guided, I'm not going to lie. Paratroopers are designed to kill Joe. This is your job. This is what you've chosen to do. You want to close and kill the enemy and bayonet him in the face. He wants to kill and behead British soldiers. You gonna let that happen? No! No, no bro. Bro. You gonna let that happen? No, no, no bro. Bro. Who's got it about them to close up and to kill the enemy? Who's got the bollocks, Joe? Who's got the minerals to get amongst this? Who wants to be a paratrooper? What makes the grass grow? Blow, blow, blow! Joe, this is what we're all about. Closing and killing with the enemy. This is what the <laughs> man are designed if you haven't got 100% aggression and you don't want to go in and do that job, then you'll get killed. You've got to think on the other end of that, there's another person with 100% aggression. So your aggression has got to outmatch his aggression and you've got to be able to take it to him. He's going to kill you or you're going to kill him. Simple as. It's down the middle, black and white. So the more aggression you've got that's going to aid you in taking his life, you need, to, you need to show it, you need to have that about him. And if he's as aggressive as you, then, then you've got a fight in your hand. Again! Again! I fought! I fought! Again! Again! I'm 17 and I'm the youngest bloke in the platoon. I did some work experience with the army and I was uh, initially I wanted to go to the Marines. She said, why don't you join the paras? They're, sort of the, uh, they're better. And I thought, who are the paras? I knew who paratroopers were. But um, so I looked, it, looked into it and uh, thought, yeah, this is definitely for me. It's the hardest training you can do. I want a bit of that. I am originally from Afghanistan. I grew up in a war zone. There were fighting, there were gunshots every day on the road going on. Um, and that was basically my childhood growing up to that day. And, seen dead bodies and um, killings from, a, from an early stage of that, that age. The paratroopers that I met in Afghanistan, they kind of stood out to me because uh, they were more braver and they were like going in first uh, for anything. And that kind of attracts you that, yes, I, I want to be part of that regiment and I want to be part of that pride wearing that maroon beret. If you cannot fucking stab a fucking standing steel dummy, how are you supposed to kill someone who wants to kill you? Do you understand? Yes, Corporal! Advance! Ah! 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 Fucking hell, Joe! You couldn't scare fucking girl guides! Bit of fucking aggression! You're about to kill the enemy! They're very scary, but if you don't mess around, you won't get you won't get a slice, but you don't want to piss them off. They're, as the paratroopers, they're naturally very scary blokes when when prodded. Get fucking up here now! Start running now! Get on it! Get on, John! John! These people want to send you back to your family in a fucking box. Is quite sort of mentally and emotionally battering. It's not in a way that people say watching this or what on Sea Street would think. You definitely have to live it and experience it to really understand because people, so many people, sort of serving and veterans t talk to me before as a, it's a mental game. And I thought, All right, just keep going. But it's so much more than that. And people, I don't think people will realise until they come here and experience it. Get in, Nathan! Get in! In front of you! Get in! Never be a paratrooper if you are not more aggressive than this. Joe, this is where the metal meets the fucking meat. Both of you fucking need to take a hard fucking look at yourselves. Is this the profession that you want, Joe? Yes, yes Lord, bro. Bro. Well, we'll see you again. Let's go back to the start. You're both going again. Get away! Get down to that gate now. Oh. Go, bro. I can't run. Can't Cheers, Use okay, this as a rest of period, okay? Don't shit the floor. Let's go. Keep walking, mate. Describe that to me. <laughs>
Fucking horrid. Disappointing. Fucking. Trying to fucking run. Fucking can't. Okay, you're telling yourself not to in your head. You can do it, mate. Trust me. Ah, get in! Ah, in front of you! Ah, in the face! Ah, Keep stabbing him, Joe! Ah, kill him! Kill him! Ah, get fucking moving! Kill ah, him! Ah, ah, kill him, Joe! Ah, let's go! Start running later! Get by there! We strive to be the elite. We will be the first troops out of the door if there is a conflict. To that end, we need to be ready for it. If you turn out a Joe um, that isn't good enough and he's not making the cut, you are potentially failing that person if they go on operations. You do not want to set them up for failure. They may go away in operations. If their skills aren't good enough, if they're not physically robust enough, they may not come back from operations. Ah! There's something about you! Ah! You went past it! Get ah! Let's go! To burn it! Let's fucking go! Come on, let's wave a couple more. I'd like to transfer a corporal. What? I'd like to transfer a corporal. To the rifles corporal. <laughs> Why? My body just can't handle it, corporal. When we get back, we'll have a word. It's corporal. Wow. I want to go to the rifles. Fuck off, please. Yeah, please fuck, off man. fuck off. Wow. Right. I've already just can't handle it, mate. Get, get off, go. As soon as you get off, go to get off. I've let down the team, honestly, but I feel like I'd be wasting my time if I carried on purely because my body, I just don't feel it's ready yet for this kind of shit. I just feel pretty shit. <laughs> Just 21 of the original 40 recruits are still left in the platoon. They've gone through the stage now of being stripped back. They now can progress and we can start bringing them on to be more complex in the things we ask them to do. Get down. They are starting to be shaped towards paratroopers rather than just soldiers. They are gradually maturing. They've got a very different outlook on life now. And we're just building on that now and making sure that when they get, if they get to the end of the course, they are a polished, good soldier that can do anything that's asked of them. The paratroopers are the best. The, the training is absolutely elite. It's the hardest thing you can ever do. If you earn something, with your sweat and tears and pain and all the, 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 the blood. When you get it at the end, that's the best feeling because you, no one can take it from you because you've earned it. Private Parry, one of the oldest recruits, has returned to the platoon having recovered from his leg injury. 
because of my age, one or two people will say, no, if you get injured, do you mean you're not going to heal quick enough? Or do you mean your, your muscles, your this and that? I've got all these reasons thrown at me. I was like, well, I'll show you. Because there are guys who were here, who are younger than me, who haven't made it. You know, so every guy that's left who's been younger, me still being here at this point is an achievement. So. Come in. Right, I understand you want to hand in your transfer letter. Read it out to me. This is my letter requesting to transfer from the Parachute Regiment Training Company to the Royal Anglians, 2nd Italian Punches. I'm not happy here and I'm struggling with fitness, both physically and mentally. The overall intensity of the course has constantly got me down and therefore I'm convinced I don't want to be a paratrooper at the minute. I would like to thank all the training team for their time, effort and professionalism throughout the course. Private Latham. Let's have a look. Right, Latham, that's all very well and good. When you came to us at the start, all right, you made it very clear that you wanted to be the best, okay? And you wanted a physical and mental challenge. You wanted the Maroon Beret, okay? You came to us looking for it. You are now giving up those 12 weeks, okay, to go somewhere else because you think it's too tough at this stage. Yes, sir. Okay, and your decision would be to leave our regiment and go to one that's not as good? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you 100% sure that this is what you want to do, Nathan? Yes, sir. Fine, if that's the attitude you're going to take, all right, I would not take you to war, so that's fine by me. All right, if you go, pop the door open on your way out. Thanks, sir. <laughs> I think it slowly ate away at me. I just didn't want to be unhappy. Nobody knows you better than yourself. I don't want to break myself doing this. You only get one body, and a lot of lads, because it's so tough, do get some life-changing injuries. My dream of the sort of being a para slowly decreased. I'm not interested anymore. Cruise into it. Deep breaths. Stick with the man in front. For the next month, the physical training is intensified. This stage is called beat up. Let's go. Come on. Do it on the move. Do it on the move. Let's go. Keep going. This way. This way. This way. Let's go. Push it in. Go. Push it in. How are you breathing now, Joe? You're all right. Deep breath. In through your nose. In through your nose. I do. Rest your hand on your head. Head up, head up, head up. Stay with it, Joe, you're right. You're right. Beat up is preparation for the hardest physical trial in army recruitment. It's the week known as P Company. And the platoon has built a shrine to honor this rite of passage. This test separates the parachute regiment from the rest of the army. Going up! Joe, every time you walk out from now on, okay, you're gonna look at the table, you're gonna look at what it's what it's worth, okay, you're gonna look at that bear and you're gonna think, at the end of P Company, I wanna be putting that on my head, I wanna be part of this organisation that we're a part of as well, okay? You should be striving every day to give absolute everything you fucking got to get the end goal to put that on your head. Happy with that? Yes, yes all bro! Alright, Joe, think about every single person that's passed through depot, okay, that's done exactly what you've done, alright, you are no longer with us. You give the ultimate sacrifice, alright, they have been they stood where you're stood now, alright, and they've fucking died for their country, Joe, for this fucking cat badge. So think about what it means, alright, when you're working hard to get that. Everyone understand me, Joe? Yes, all bro! Sleep tonight, don't be nervous, okay? Happy. Yes, Sergeant! Alright, Joe, get away, back to your rooms. P Company is our physical test. It has stood the same for over 60 years and everyone 
that wishes to serve with the parachute regiment has done it. And that is what essentially makes us equal, uh, equal as men, every man an emperor, as Montgomery said. I, I think I'm ready for a peak company. For me, it's more of a, a men mental challenge rather than physical, because if you get through this mentally, your, your body will follow. It's a massive fear factor. I mean, you think, fuck, is this even doable? You hear about the failure rates, um, the injuries, all that kind of stuff, and you just think, fuck, can I, can I do this? There is nobody that rocks up to P Company thinking, I got this, because it doesn't happen. You turn up, you do the tests, and the matrix will decide whether you pass or not. So yes, I remember mine. It was nails. End of chat. You will be dangling, all right? You will be sucking it in from London Town all the way around this race, all right? From the point go to the point that you cross the cattle grid, all right? You will be dangling. Yes, sir. The recruits are about to take part in the feared log race. Throughout this week, they are handed over to P Company staff, and only they can decide who passes and who fails. I kind of like handing your children over to another, an outside entity. Obviously, we still want them to pass, but we have no control over it whatsoever. That's why they do it, really, so there's no bias, so you're not biased to your section. We are the standard. If they do not perform, they will not pass. It's pretty much that simple. We have all the keys, you know, we look after all the doors. As far as it goes again, it's the regiment. Mike, drive up the hill, man. Don't walk, drive. Drive up, come on. This race covers a distance of almost two miles and will push them to the boundaries of their physical and mental endurance. Don't take the test. That tells you, drive it forward. Pull it, pull it. That is savage log race. Stand up, 16. I have to tell you again, you don't jump. Tuck it, lean forward. It is as hard as it gets. You're losing your advantage because you jack it. You're right, you can't. You start and it's nails and it don't get any easier. This is when it fucking comes, Joe. That's why I'll go. 36, come left. Come left. I have a two year old daughter. She has been my rock, my motivation. She's at the finish line of every event. She's at the finish line. She's what I want to get to. When I'm in pain, all I'm thinking is how far I've come, what sort of obstacles I've crossed, and what sort of dark days I've been in. When I was 18, um, I started uh, working uh, as a translator and interpreter for the, for the US Special Forces in Afghanistan. It was really dangerous. A few of my friends, they uh, lost their lives. I don't want to blame myself, but I couldn't do anything for them. One of my friends got shot in the head, um, and he was on my knee. Um, couldn't move, it was bleeding, and I was screaming, shouting. The next minute, sorry, he's dead. But that happened, you know. Um, sorry. Stop fucking jacking! Stand up! Stand the fuck up! Take the weight! Take the fucking weight! Hit your wrist! Shut up! Shut the fuck up! Hit your wrist through it! Stop there! Stop! Fucking fuck, man. That was tough, not gonna lie. One in a bag, innit, Garford? It's a fucking log done, innit? Good effort. All done on the front of that, Parry. Good effort. Thank you. We want to see people, when it gets hard, can you still perform? Or are you gonna wrap your bangers right in? We will see. Wait, 
times I've told you about it's over 29. Get your fucking hand in it now. Now 29. Right. Stop fucking jerking. Stand up. Stand the fuck up. Take the weight. Take the fuck. Recruits have now begun the week-long selection called P Company, which they must pass to become a member of the Parachute Regiment. Private Omar collapsed from exhaustion during the log race. He can't afford to fail again. I believe if you really want something, God will help you, and the universe will help you. This is the only dream that I have, and I've been um, waiting for this for a while. And uh, I'll, I'll do anything to uh, to pay the price and, and achieve this. So the way that I always tend to think about it and get through training is every morning I'll think about brushing my teeth. You're on the next day you brush Steve again. You do you do that every day. So when you're doing that, you can think that I've done another day, I've done another day, I've done another day. This is my little haven. This is like you have a shit day, I just open up this door and just have a look at her. You know, a lot of people got their own things they like to do. Some of them like to jump around on beds or fucking chat shit like they do most of the times. I like just to come in, have a look, remind myself why I'm here. all have their own little ways to get through things. Some of them are dads, yeah, some of them want to make the family proud. Some of them just want that, that machine on the head. Some of them, just us saying, you're not going to make it, that'll spur them on saying, who, who the fuck are these to tell me I can't make this, I can't pass this test? Mike, right, Joe, log race, done, all right? One of the hardest things you'll do on Pete Company. OK, obviously, everyone fucking hang out on that. Yeah, probably one of the hardest things you've ever fucking done, I guarantee. All right? Once well, if you come off it, don't worry about coming off it. Don't worry about coming off it, all right? You've still got enough fucking time in the bag to fucking pass P company. Don't let it bother you, Joe. Trust me, don't let it fucking get to you at all, all right? Event's done, finished. Steeple chase this afternoon. Everyone knows what steeple chase entails, all right? Happy? Let's go on. Good effort, How much do you want it? How much mental robustness have you got? Until the day of the races, you will not know. You can guess, you know, the platoon staff will have a good idea of who they think are going to do well. well. I don't know who's going to do well because I don't see them until they turn. Strong mate, strong body, or weak mate, fucking weak body. What are you? Strong. Get up there. This week, the specialist P Company staff are in charge and will decide if the recruits pass or fail. What oh, might you want it? How bad you want it? Close the fucking gap in. Actually done. Stand still. Stand still. You're fucking finished. Yeah, you can't keep up the pack. You're good to me. Everything they do on P Company represents a factor of the job that they're going to do. Whether it is gathering supplies or getting to the fight. Whatever it is, those events have got a meaning. During P Company, the platoon are tested on up to two events a day. But the most brutal is left to the end. That is not your friend, that is your opponent. Don't start trying to fucking start any fucking head, fights. But remember why you're head here. Head, Joe. Head to head. Your fucking head on his head. You do not stop punching until you are told to stop fucking punching. You do not fucking stop. The platoon are about to begin a notorious test called milling. One minute of controlled aggression. Controlled aggression, OK? We want to see which of you has the bollocks to get his head above the parapet when the rounds are coming in. 
yeah? Win the firefight, that's what we want to see. Regardless of how many fucking rounds are coming in, you are throwing more rounds at that target, okay? Control aggression, all right? I don't want to see anyone dancing around the ring like Sugar Ray Leonard, okay? Good luck, Joe. A lot of the people that come here will have never been in a fight in their life. But it is there to test their ability to keep moving forwards in the face of ultimate adversity. There are two options there. Are you going to go and hide in the corner? Or are you going to keep pushing forwards? Skins. Hey! It has to be done so that we can test them inside their heads. You can't test that in any other way. The mental ability to be able to overcome things that you will find in yourself in that ring in that very short space of time is an absolute must. I'm well done with Perry, you draw. Last few bouts now, men. I want you to make so much noise, it strips the paint off the walls. Do you understand? Yes! Yeah! Set up! Goes up! Middle! P Company for me, as well as it meaning the world to me for like my little girl, I also look at it as a bit of a punishment for being a dick out on the street. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know where I wanted to go. My head was just screwed. You know, I, fucking, I was just lost. I was like a fucking hand grenade. I've been arrested for various things, such as like, criminal damage, assault. All things that I'm overly proud with. Or, or at all, but again, I think a lot of it was just frustration and anger, you know, and I took it out probably on the wrong people at the wrong time. My head was just all over the place. Kind of in a way, punished myself because I'm trying to right write a few wrongs so I can show people that I can do good and I could do the things that I put my uh, mind to. It's the most important day of the course, the last day of P Company. If they pass, the recruits will earn their maroon berries. If they fail, they'll be dismissed from the platoon. In a few hours, everything will be over. Good. It's just looking forward to finish it. Private Omar collapsed on the log race. And to avoid failing the entire course, he must complete the next event, the stretcher race. Go on, get where you can hear, man. My name's Scott Mina, uh, and almost 10 years ago, I was stood exactly where you're standing today. I became a casualty as a result of an IED blast. And I remember lying on the ground and got five paratroopers around me and got me on a stretcher. And in a flash, and after another explosion, 
There was just darkness again. That whole stretch of party had initiated another device. Moments after that, two of the blokes, the only two who could still walk, one of them was blind, still pulled back up that stretcher handle and dragged me out of the hole. Those blokes dug out, literally, were blind. So today, get amongst it and get around that course today. Because one day, it might be for real. Right, get the stretcher out. Come on, let's go. The race is run over five miles with a 200 pound stretcher close to the weight of an injured soldier. You work together on the stretcher. The key there is a casualty. You do not matter in that situation. You know, it is all about getting that person to safety. Get him off there, yeah. Get on the fucking stretcher. Stop taking the piss. Keep right hand on. I'm not going to tell you again about holding that fucking stretcher right. I am my work. I live my work. If the recruits coming through aren't as invested and as passionate as we are, then, you know, when they are required to do their job to the standard that they need, are they going to do that? Or is there going to be a question mark there? There cannot be a question mark, otherwise you don't have the standard. This is for myself. First, I want to have a self-pride to say that I've achieved something in life. I've actually done something valuable to the country, to the people. Everywhere, the bad guy exists and the good guy exists. So if there are bad guys down in my hometown, in my country, yes, uh, I would go and, and do the job and finish them. If they're bad, bad guys here, I would still do the same job and finish it. Keep it straight! Private Omar isn't the only recruit. who have had their life defined by war in Afghanistan. Get off your gun! Get off me! Let's go! Fucking run! When he left school, Private Parry fought there as a teenager during his first spell in the army. The decision to leave the military was by far the worst decision I've made in my life. 100%. The thought about what I've done, the decision I've made to leave the army, um, just to do normal day-to-day -day things. I mean, it was a decision that ate me up for a long, for for years actually, ate me up for years, and I was never at rest since re-enlisting and putting the uniform on my back. I feel better, you know. I was just angry before. Keep driving! Head up, remember why you're here, remember what you want. It's a fucking leap to stretch Come on, boys! Don't matter how tired you are, don't matter how much you're dangling off your chin strap. You get them to the point they need to get to so that they can receive the care that they need to get. Stop leaning on it, boy! Drive it forward! Push it forward! That's don't lean on it! Get a fucking grip with yourself, boy! You're on your last chance! Can you do everything that I've just explained? Yes or no. There isn't a well kind of, because in a situation like that, well kind of gets people killed. So therefore, yes or no. There's a pickle point! Let's fucking go! Ah, fucking drive up it! Let's Let fucking go! Move! Go. move. You don't! Do you not stop till you talk! Stop making noise! Start doing it with your actions!
Being removed from the stretcher race means Private Omar has failed P Company. He will now leave the platoon. Fuck's sake. Fucking pissed off with this. Having completed all the events, Private Parry has passed P Company. He has now earned the right to wear the maroon beret. Well, well done to everyone who stood in front of me now. Okay, the fact that you got to the end of test week, this stage in your training, is impressive in itself. I'm sure you'll agree that the majority of what you did this week was about. It came from here. It came from here. Less about, you know, how fit you were. So, brush brush into my head. How you feeling? Sir, I'm trying to see if you had. Sir, which event did you hurt the most? Did 20 miles, sir. Really? Yeah, it's boring. Go on. Sir. Thanks, sir. All right. Sir, which event did you love the most? None of it. <laughs> None of it. Okay, fair one. I admire your honesty. Good. <laughs> so, it also feels good as well. So, all these people that doubted me, people said I couldn't do it, all that stuff back home. Yeah, Evidence can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, did it. Do you know I mean? Yeah, it's the start of a new chapter now. knew, all right, you and you were on the fence, we knew that all the way through. Yeah, okay, a lot more work required from you two, didn't you? You didn't pass one event, did you, Phillips? Okay. You did not pass one event, did you, Reese? Okay, you were 50-50 with the log, yeah, you came off the log, and you came off the stretcher, okay, you've got no doubt in your mind, you're all good Joes, okay, I'm not fucking doubting your performance in regards to soldiering, just saying that you didn't pass the test at this time of asking. Any questions for me, Joe? Questions? 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 Right, carry on. I don't know. Obviously, it's not a good feeling, but I'm going to pass it next time. In 10 weeks' time, Private Omar will get another chance at P Company with the next platoon of recruits. He was one of 12 to have failed this crucial test. It's just one of those things um, Joe needs to take it on the chin. You know, it happens. It's the test for a reason. And these guys weren't uh, good enough. They didn't make the standard. Just 13 of the original 40 have made it to the end. They'll now join the Parachute Regiment, expected to be ready for war. Athens Platoon, our mission is to defeat enemy en route Broadway in order to deny enemy freedom of manoeuvre. Put your hand up in the middle, you're the killing group. Purely for selfish reasons, yes. I want to go to war. I want to command men on operations. It's what I've trained to do. It's what I want to do. I've always wanted to do it. So yes, I want to go to war. You are essentially being trained to do a job you may never do. It would be a lot like training to be a firefighter and never putting out a fire. Right, Joe, outside, get your kit back on. We'll go for rehearsals.
being a paratrooper, it is literally a case of just, it's a cage for me. And if we do get deployed on operations, then not just myself, but all the other soldiers, I'm sure they all got this beast that wants to come out and just fucking destroy things. <laughs> but in the right way, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I personally think the military, even from a young age, even up till now, especially now, the military is definitely the ideal world for me. Private Parry and 12 other original Joes are now ready to begin their careers in the regiment. They are now part of the army's elite. I've got a duty to care over these recruits now. Obviously, when they leave me and go to wherever they go, whatever battalions they go to, I, I probably might not see them for years, but, you know, if one of them, God forbid, was to die on operations, you know, I, I'd always remember him as being one of my recruits, and, you know, I'd, I'd make sure I could attend the funeral you know, and just be there because in the day, you know, I, I put him on that journey to become a paratrooper and I, I feel like I've still got that onus on him. He's still part of that family and I'd still like to finish that journey with him as such. Private Latham, who left the course after bayonet training, transferred to the Royal Anglian Regiment and won the award for top recruit. Private Omar repeated the P Company test, but got injured. When he recovers, he'll try yet again. Next time, the recruits discover what life's really like in the regiment. So the Russian border's just over that way to the east. And battle-hardened soldiers are ready for war. We might be frowned upon and people will be like, oh, what army? We don't need an army, all this shit. Let's all just get along. But um, we'll be called upon when shit hits the fan.